Meal planning can be tough. The process seems pretty straightforward when you look into it, but when you really get into the details, it can be confusing. But don't give up, I'm here to help you out. In today's video, we're going to walk through the entire meal planning process. I'm going to tell you how long it takes, how I fit it into my schedule, and how to turn your meals into a super simple money-saving machine. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany and I am a millennial financial coach who makes videos all about taking the fear out of finance. Last week, I talked all about meal planning and how buying in bulk can actually save you money. Today, I'm going to put that into action and show you exactly how that process looks for me. Now, I've done different things in the past and I know other people do it differently than I do now. So please take what you think you'll like from this video or research others and you can make your own system with whatever you can fit into your lifestyle. The basic steps are the same, but the whole point is to plan out what you're actually going to eat. So my advice is to try a bunch of different methods and just see what works for you. Let's use the same steps as last week and we'll go through it together. For planning my meals, I use the app Meal Lime. I love this app. And shout out to my friend San for introducing me because it's bomb. We'll go over the details in Meal Lime in another video, but suffice it to say that it's the best meal planning app that I've come across. There's a paid subscription if you want special features like premium recipes or nutritional information, but you can also use the app totally for free. With Mealime, I can put in my preferences like no peanuts, fun fact, I have a peanut allergy, or no eggplant, another fun fact, I am not a huge fan of eggplant, and it will filter through a bunch of recipes for me. Then you just scroll through what it presents and pick the meals right from the preloaded ones in the app. What I do is I go through the calendar to calculate how many meals I actually need. Then I'll go through and see which weekends we're going to be somewhere else and we won't need the food, and count out how many weekdays that we'll actually need meals for. We like to set the servings for four people, so Alex and I can each eat a dinner meal and then have leftovers for lunch the next day. So meals are counted as like one per day even though it's feeding us twice. Once I have that number I'll go through meal lime and pick the recipes I like. Then I'll let Alex go through so he can like veto the ones that he doesn't feel into. After that it's on to step number two. Now this is a huge reason why I love meal lime. Once I pick my meals from the app it just aggregates all the ingredients that I need and provides me with a grocery list. It literally saves so much time. And after that, there's actually not much left in this step that doesn't blend into step number three, so I'll just move on to the pricing. <laughs> we use a service called comfort.to, which I'm pretty sure is just a Toronto company, but if you don't live in Toronto, you can do the same thing and you'll just have to get out and get the items yourself instead of have them delivered. Comfort.to goes to Costco for us and buys all the food that we need like a delivery service. We actually don't even have a Costco card, but we use their website to look at what we want. And if we spend over $199, we get free delivery. Again, this specific service isn't going to be available for everyone, but it will be the same type of process without the delivery. So when we go through our list, we're going to be looking at all of the bulk purchases from Costco. I'll price match it out depending on what meats we need. And I'll make sure that we have enough for that over $199 to get the free delivery. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over quickly how I do this um, and usually I'm actually doing this on the phone um, I put a little screenshot of the app in for you um, so it's actually much more I mean it's an app it's made for the phone so it's a lot more optimized there but uh, doing this I kind of want you to like see my face so I can explain things and also sometimes it's actually easier to do it on the desktop uh, that's one of the things that I like about me Lime, um, because to price match I'm kind of going through different tabs and things like that. And it is sometimes easier to actually do that on a desktop instead of flipping through it on your phone. So um, I have opened up uh, my meal line. This is the desktop version of meal line. And you can see here all of the recipes that uh, we've picked for this month. Um, and we're kind of halfway through the month now. So this is kind of being recorded after I've like already started this. Um, but I'm just going to give you an example of the things that I do. So you can see that these, uh, some of the recipes are kind of blurred out. And those are the ones that we've already actually used for this month. So when you go through, you can select, uh, see this grocery list thing. And it's actually already been um, kind of aggregated into everything that you need. Now it's a little bit difficult because 
what I like to do is buy the meat in bulk uh, because that's usually what's cheaper or things like potatoes or I don't know, like onions or things like that. Um, types of produce that's not going to go bad in the month. Um, if I can buy that in bulk as well, I might do that. Um, so to take this list, I kind of have to separate it, separate it out into different categories. And if you can see, it's already uh, separated out into different categories. So I usually just scroll all the way down to the meat category. And actually, I've already kind of done this. So uh, at the bottom here, you'll see all of the meat that I already purchased. Um, but if you scroll down to the meat category, that's where it'll be. And it'll give you all of the uh, actual meat that you need in an aggregated form. So I scroll down to that and see how much of it I need then I will price check it. So the first thing I do is go on to uh, comfort.to, which is this website here. And for example, we need 1.35 uh, kilograms of chicken thighs. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go chicken. Okay, and chicken thighs are uh, $32 for actually 2.3 kilograms. So Let's check on the next tab. I usually go to one of uh, my other grocery stores that we shop at. I live in Canada, so there's Loblaws here and we go to Metro a lot, uh, but Loblaws is the closest to us. So we usually search at Loblaws. So then I will just search chicken thighs. So you can see that's $27 for one kilogram. It's a lot cheaper to get 2.3 for a little bit more money. Even though we don't actually need 2.3, we need one point three, five, a lot of numbers in this video, sorry. <laughs> um, what I would usually do is I would just buy this anyway and then just freeze it for later. So then I'll know calculating the next month what I have kind of left over and I'll like take stock of that before I make the list again. And then I do that same thing for all of the stuff that we have here. Um, and actually another thing that I do is for example, chicken thighs and chicken breasts. No, they're not the exact same thing, but sometimes I'll double up on it. So if I need a lot more chicken breasts and like not really a lot of thighs, I might as well just get two things of chicken breasts and just pretend that these chicken thighs are going to be chicken breasts when I use them. Um, again, that's not like proper cooking, but like it saves me money and Alex and I really don't care whether we're eating chicken thighs or chicken breasts. They're basically the same. So as long as it doesn't matter to the recipe, um, that's that's something that you can do as well those kind of like easy substitutions um and you can do that with beef as well so like sometimes it calls for like a certain cut of steak and like me i know like i know steaks are different and different cuts mean different things uh but it really doesn't matter just bulk it up if you need to and it, nobody cares and then after i do this i can move on to actually organizing the food <laughs> This is where I take all the meals that I picked and choose which week it's going to go in. Once I've done all this, I go through it again and make the produce lists and separate out the meat. For each week, I decide what produce items we're going to need and then I'm organizing the meat to go through and separate them out according to which week that they're in. So this is how I usually write it out. So I'll write out uh, the number of weeks that we have, like week one, week two, uh, and there's uh, five weeks in May. And then I also have the days of the week that we actually are needing to to have the meal plans. Um, so for example, like Sunday, we were probably like doing something or like this Sunday here, I have Mother's Day. So we like went out for dinner and we didn't actually need a meal that day. So I will write in those type of things. Um, and it's actually helpful to uh, like reference a calendar while you're doing this as well. Um, but once you get in uh, the actual uh, dates here or the days listed, then you really don't need to to reference a calendar again. And again, I'm showing this to you on my desktop because uh, usually I do this on my phone, but I wanted you to like see my face and things like that. Uh, you can do it on a desktop, but it's much easier to just do it on your phone while you're like watching Netflix or something. Um, so it really doesn't take that much out of your day to actually do it. Um, I would say that if I were to do this and do it for all of the weeks, it would probably take me like an hour and a half maybe, but you can also do it um, by like each week individually. Um, and that usually takes, I don't know, like a half an hour maybe. So after you've kind of uh, set up like the structure of this, the first thing that I usually do is I just go through the recipes and just 
plot them into um, where I want them to go on this list. Um, and again, I want to make sure, um, if you remember from last week, I said that you want to make sure that your types of meats and types of, I don't know, ingredients are kind of both together a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if I have an example of that here. Mm, okay, I do have an example. Uh, so for example, in week two, on Monday, there's fish tacos with mango salsa, but then also on Thursday, we're having shrimp tacos with mango salsa. So I'm bulking all that up. So I have mangoes in two recipes, and they're pretty separated. So Monday and Thursday are different... Uh, are far enough apart that we won't get sick of eating mangoes, but they're also during the same day, so we only have to buy mangoes once. Um, and the same thing with the tacos as well. So we're just gonna buy a bunch of like taco shells and just use them in the same week instead of uh, waiting for a couple weeks after to use them. Here are the meals that I've chosen. And basically I'm just gonna take these and plug them into whatever days that I want them to be on. And then once I kind of do that, then I'm going to make my like produce grocery list. Um, so for example, uh, this margarita pizza is actually on, on the first week. So I'm going to go into that recipe and I'm going to go to ingredients and I'm going to look at the actual ingredients that I need for that week. Um, and again, I'm going to do this for all of the recipes here. Uh, so you can see like fresh basil and then I have fresh basil on my list, right? And then a block of mozzarella cheese and then I have a block of mozzarella cheese on my list. So it really just depends on what recipes that you're putting within your weeks. But what you want is basically a week of produce shopping list, like the extra ingredients that you need, as well as the like meat ingredients. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a couple seconds. Okay, so here is uh, the final Costco haul. It is mostly meat this time um, because we didn't actually need a lot of cheese. Um, and it was cheaper to get that at uh, the grocery store than it was at Loblaws. So now what I have to do is basically go through and put some of this items away. Like obviously this needs to be like refrigerated and frozen um, because it's not going to last in the fridge um, for the whole month, it needs to be frozen. So uh, because all of these things, so you'll see here that we have like basically all this ground beef. Now we are actually are not going to use all this ground beef this month. Um, it just was cheaper to buy it in this bulk form. Um, so we'll have to use it for like the next month, but it'll keep in the freezer for a while. So what I'm going to do is basically like chop it up into like chunks or like servings um, and like put it in bags. Um, I wish I didn't have to use plastic bags um, because that's unenvironmentally friendly, but that's all we have for now. So we're gonna use them. Um, and I'm going to kind of put them in their own servings so that when I need them, I can take them out of the freezer and I don't have to like defrost like the entire chunk. I can just defrost what we need um, in terms of like, like meal prep things. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for uh, this as well. One thing that I forgot to mention is before I did all this, um, I wrote out the, this is very rough, but I basically wrote out um, what meals and what meat needs to go in which uh, containers. So I need to be able to understand ugh, um, like how many pork chops I need on week two and how many fish, like when the fish comes in or like how many um, sections I need to separate this into. Um, so I took my meal plan menu and I essentially wrote out like week one, I need two chickens. Week two, I need however many porks, like all of that. Um, so just so you know kind of how I did that part of it and then I'm going to take this list and I'm going to write it on these plastic bags. Again, not environmentally friendly, but eventually I'll fix that. Um, and I will write it on these bags so that when everything is in the freezer and all sectioned out, I can just read the bag and be like, okay, week one, I take out this bag, week two, I take out these bags. Um, and then also I want to separate the bags out. So there's going to be like a week one pork bag. There's going to be a week one chicken bag. There's going to be a week one uh, beef bag um, so that they're not all like mixed together because that's kind of gross and unsanitary. Um, so yes, a lot of bags and a lot of sectioning out, but once it all gets done, it makes it super easy. Um, so I can just pull them out of the fridge and it's great. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Another thing that I do is sometimes, because Costco is huge, um, I cut things in half. So for example, this pork is like a ridiculous amount um, thick, 
so I usually cut these in half so I can use them because like people aren't gonna eat like this is not one serving of pork this is like four servings of pork <laughs> um so yeah so I cut them in half and then use that um use each half for like a portion of a meal This is the best part. Once I have this set up, I just cook for the rest of the month. I love knowing exactly what we're going to eat and that all the ingredients will be right where I need them to be. Alex and I try and use the dinner hour to talk about our days with no phones or TV. And it's really great to just be able to sit down every night with a home cooked meal. I actually even enjoy cooking as well. I used to be a much better baker than I was a cook, but since planning my meals and cooking almost every night, my skill set has totally changed. And I'm pretty dang good, if I do say so myself. <laughs> All right, please let me know in the comments below if this video helped you out. Or if you have any questions about how I meal plan, I love talking to you all about your stories, so please share them with me. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, and if you want to see more of these videos, subscribe to this channel.